So the next speaker is uh, Mr. Dominique Lavi. Uh, Dominique, yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, Mr. Lavi is working for the uh, uh, Jacques Cartier and Champagne Bridge Incorporated, which is a, a crown or, or a, a company-owned, uh, it's governmental company. So in, in, uh, they are owning many bridges uh, in the Montreal area. So, Mr. Lavi. Thank you. Okay. So today I'm going to talk to you about the, the instrumentation, monitoring, and load testing of a 50-span large precast, pre-stress concrete bridge, uh, basically the Champlain Bridge in the Montreal area. A uh, quick presentation outlook. Uh, just a quick word about uh, my employer, uh, the Jacques Cartier Champlain Bridge Corporation. Um, we're going to go through the uh, Champlain Bridge characteristics for those who are not familiar with the structure. Uh, Quick word on the uh, strengthening systems that uh, were put into place during the last decade to keep the structure uh, operational uh, in between the new bridge uh, being built. Uh, a quick outlook of the type of sensors and data types we're using to monitor the bridge. Um, what we're doing for the girders and pure cap monitoring on that bridge. Um, the load test program, the uh, key performance indicators we're using to, uh, to follow up on the bridge on a weekly basis. And uh, we're going to go through a couple of data uh, analysis examples, uh, just something really visual so you can all get a glimpse of how we, uh, we monitor the structure. So uh, the Jacques Cartier Champagne Bridge Corporation is a federal crown corporation established in 1978. Uh, we're mainly responsible for seven uh, infrastructures uh, in the Montreal area, uh, mainly Jacques Cartier uh, and the Champlain Bridge. Uh, we all are also responsible for the ice control structures, uh, mainly known as the Estacade, uh, which is breaking down the ice coming from uh, the Saint Louis Lake. Um, we are also responsible for part of the uh, Bonaventure Expressway. Um, also, uh, we're responsible for the uh, bypass bridge that was built on between Nuns Island and Montreal Island. Uh, and the federal uh, part of the uh, Mercier Bridge, basically just the part over the uh, St. Lawrence uh, Seaway. And uh, finally, the uh, Meadowsville Tunnel, uh, which is a small tunnel and the southern part of the uh, Montreal area. And we're basically having our 48th anniversary uh, this year. So, Champlain Bridge. Uh, basically, the bridge is in three sections. So, section five, six, and seven. Section, the sections we are monitoring are section five and seven, which are the ones who, that are uh, concrete, pre-cast, pre, uh, pre pre-stressed uh, section. Uh, section six is uh, the one going over the St. Lawrence Seaway. So because of the clearance needed for the boats and everything, that one was built in uh, steel. So it's a cantilever section and will not be discussed today, but just to give you a, clear, a quick overview. Um, so section five and seven, as you can see, uh, basically there are seven girders uh, put in place, cast in place, and uh, they're, they're about three meters high, uh, spaced for about 12 feet apart. And the deck, the slab, was cast in place, which is about eight and a half inches thick. And everything is uh, holded together with uh, post-tensioning uh, transversely in the slab. So this is the main reason why uh, the bridge cannot be repaired that easily, and that's why it's being replaced. Uh, same principle as if you're holding a stack of books and putting it into that area. If you remove one of the books, everything's going to fall down. So same thing for those girders. We cannot remove and replace one without closing the bridge in both directions. And since it's the most used bridge in Canada uh, with almost 60 million crossings a year, uh, that was not an option in the, in the Montreal area. So just a quick uh, look back in time. So you can see on the left picture, which is one of the girders being, uh, with the frame being built, 
Uh, you can see most of the post tensioning cables put, that were put in place. Basically, they're like a big U, really uh, wide shape. And the uh, rightmost picture was once the framing was done, they were putting the concrete into place and casting it and let it cure for a couple of days, if not weeks. So uh, this is the, the, the overview. So over the last decade, I said we have been doing major strengthening uh, work on the bridge. So just to give you a, a rough outlook of everything that was put into place, there were two uh, campaigns of post-tensioning on the uh, edge girders and also some of the interior girders. Um, there were other uh, strengthening systems like posts, auxiliary beams, uh, carbon fiber polymer reinforcement on the edge girders. And also in 2013, if you heard about the super beam incident, basically during one of the uh, routine inspections, uh, one of the edge girders were found to have a crack and mid-span. Basically it started at the bottom and was zipping quickly up to the top. Uh, in a matter of uh, days, it could stretch for a couple of inches uh, on a daily basis. So it was quite critical. And that's why they put into place the, that strengthening system. And after that, the monitoring program came to, uh, into light because we needed to monitor the structure uh, during all of the, meanwhile, the, the, the reinforcements were put into place on all of the, the edge girders to secure the bridge. So uh, what type of uh, sensors we're using? Oops, sorry. Um, we're using over 340 uh, optical strain sensors. Uh, basically, uh, they're either two meters or five meter long. The five meter ones we're using a mid-span. The two meter one we're using in the Shiravia both ends of the girders. Um, the resolution is two micrometers. So basically, if you take an average human hair thickness, you split it into uh, 30 segments. That's the resolution we're getting from those sensors. Uh, basically, how those sensors are working, they're measuring the difference uh, between the incoming and outgoing light uh, in decibels. So one of the advantages, advantages of that uh, technology is that it's not influenced by the uh, electrical uh, currents uh, over the bridge with all of the electromagnetic, inter electromagnetic interference that could tamper with the data. So we're recording two types of data, basically what we call the static data, which is recorded slowly. Uh, the sensors are recording 50 times per second, but if no major events are occurring, we're just doing an average over a span of 10 minutes of all the 30,000 data points we're getting, and we're storing that. If, let's say, a truck is going over the bridge and, over the bridge and just uh, gives a good impact on the, the sensors, then we record what we call the dynamic data. Basically, uh, once the threshold is met, the system stores the, uh, all the data points recorded 50 times per second over a span of 60 seconds. So if we zoom in on one of those red lines, basically it's a one minute recording at 50 hertz. So it gives us a good resolution of how the truck uh, went over the span and bended and the, if the, the, the span, if the girder uh, took his, uh, its initial uh, state. So on each girder we have one uh, sensor at mid-span in the bending zone. We have uh, two at both ends in the shear uh, zone. So a uh, quick computation, uh, 50 spans, two edge girder per span, three sensors per span. So that gives us a big 300 sensors. Uh, we also installed other sensors on some of the interior girders uh, depending on some of the consultants' recommendations. Uh, on, there's a, a watch list of the girders, so if a girder uh, ends up on that watch list, then we just add a sensor to the system. And that is uh, excluding all the temperature and the uh, crack sensors we put in place on uh, specific positions if there was a concern in that area. Uh, we are also monitoring the pier cap uh, of the bridge. Um, in 2017, we had a recommendation saying that once all of the edge girders were secured, 
the next uh, most critical uh, element of the bridge would be the pier. So uh, what we did, we took, uh, if you remember, the sensor that was placed uh, on both ends of the girder in the shear section. We moved all of the sensors available uh, just under uh, the, the, sec the third and fifth uh, girders on each pan. So this is what it looks like. So we're monitoring those uh, pure caps based on the uh, static data that we saw. Since the dynamic data doesn't have that much impact when a, a truck or a big vehicle goes uh, over the bridge, over the pure cap. So this is uh, what we're doing. Uh, there's um, a whole section in the, the article saying that what are the complications we had uh, interpreting that data because sometimes it seems like the uh, the actual data is reacting inverse to the temperature which was puzzling for a while so uh, if you look if you want to look at that uh, in depth there's a lot of information in the article uh, so the load test program uh, what is it but basically we were measuring the effects of a heavy truck going over the bridge at uh, 10 kilometer per hour uh, since we couldn't stop traffic all of for 50 spans in a row, we decided to use a very slow speed, so basically 10 kilometers, like 6.2 miles per hour, uh, where, well, only on the two sections we have a monitoring system installed. Uh, when we were doing it months, once a month, uh, at midnight, just to listen the impact of traffic, and uh, just small fact uh, on nights that there wasn't Canadian games, because there were more people going out of Montreal and that could create a big uh, traffic jam at midnight. So we didn't want that. So how we did a back and forth between Nuns Island and uh, South Shore of Montreal. So um, we had also uh, trucks for spans back to isolate the traffic. So we didn't want any trucks going by and just interfering with the, the data. So we had to... Uh, all that traffic for that. And uh, just a quick view on how the data could match with the truck going on the, the bridge. So basically, we could use the data to monitor if the truck was really going at 10 kilometers per hour. And uh, if there was any interference in the data, we would have seen it uh, quite easily. Uh, computation of those tests. Um, initially, all of the 300 sensors were uh, the results of those uh, recordings were uh, measured by hand. So basically, if you had, uh, if you wanted to give uh, like a light, slight punishment to somebody, well, you ask him to uh, compute that data by hand uh, 300 times. So it took about a week to do. And uh, since two people could basically use different, uh, oops. Sorry. Like two people could not basically use the same uh, lower and higher point that could yield some difference in the result depending on the person uh, analyzing them. So we asked a local company to come up with a software uh, alternative to that. So basically the software will not be biased by human error. So in just a few clicks uh, in putting the start time of the test and the speed of the truck, we could end up with the results in the, just the next morning instead of waiting for a whole week. So it was uh, a lot quicker and a lot more precise uh, to work with those results. Uh, after a couple of months, um, we decided to put the load test aside and instead use the daily traffic, which is basically like clockwork on uh, that bridge, since the traffic is uh, really, really uh, even day after day. So what we did, we developed uh, three key performance indicators on the, using the, the monitoring we had. So basically, the number of time the uh, dynamic events were recorded per span was one of these indicators. So if one, set, if one girder was more flexible than the others, then the number of recordings would be higher. Um, the amplitude of the recorded events, so basically lowest value, highest value, uh, converted into micro strains to just remove the units from there. 
and finally uh, the natural frequency of the girder once the, the moving truck uh, went by, the girder would vibrate and then come back come back to its uh, initial resting point. So uh, just a quick uh, data analysis examples. We'll be looking at span uh, 1011E on the south shore of Montreal. So if we zoom in, that's what uh, we're looking at. Basically, why this span? Because, two reasons. Because since the girders were damaged due to the, uh, the icing salts mixing with the melted water, uh, melted snow that yielded solid water, and also uh, because of the, the highway going under the bridge, uh, there was like an aspiration. Uh, the, the water would lift and then hit the structure and just damage further the, the girders. So that one was a lot more flexible and more uh, visually. Uh, there's, there's a big, uh, bigger impact visually to, to, to look at the data. So there's three events that we're going to be looking at. So basically the decrease in the tractor due to the thawing period. Uh, the uh, commissioning of the new uh, lane control lights and the installation of the modular trusses on the edge girders. So these three events give a uh, big impact on the data visually. So if you look at the first uh, KPI, the number of recorded dynamic events, uh, you can see that right after the towing period was lifted, the number of the, uh, recorded events uh, just rose uh, instantly. So basically since truck weight wasn't limited anymore, then heavier trucks lead, yielded a, num a higher number of events. Uh, after the new lights, uh, the new uh, lane lights were commissioned, basically the trucks were moved from the rightmost uh, lane to the center lane, so all of the edge girders were uh, relieved of the effort. So uh, a dramatic decrease of the number of recorded events. And lastly, once the modular trusses were put into place, well, the, you can see the effect, the, uh, the number of recordings went down drastically also. Uh, yeah, okay. So basically same thing for the uh, second KPI, the deformation values. And finally, uh, the free vibrating frequency, which basically had no impact instead, uh, unless it was the modular trust installation. So the frequency went up as expected. So in conclusion, uh, the monitoring program for the Champlain Bridge helped uh, GCCBI to establish a clear picture on the uh, structure state. Uh, it allowed the possibility to take preemptive action in uh, response to the suspected degradation, so we could adjust the strengthening, the strengthening uh, program order of the, the, the girders of the span, depending on their uh, observed state. Um, and uh, finally, uh, it also allowed us to anticipate the uh, future behavior on the structure and compare it to the actual data, and I don't know why <laughs> it was cut uh, on, the slide, on the slide. So this is it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for questions. Uh, what kind of, uh, I'm sorry I came a little late, what kind of sensor you used? Uh, basically it's optical sensors. Fiber, uh, bright, Fiber optics, bright, optical gra sensors. Grating, fiber bright grating. Uh, what kind of integration system do you use? Uh, basically it's a company named uh, Osmos, it's uh, French technology. And uh, I'm not sure of the specifics on how the, the, the sensors are... Manufactured? Yeah. You glued it from the outside? Sorry? You glued it to the concrete? Uh, they were, um, they're screws, uh, they're glued and screwed into place. And what is the gauge length? Because you can design those sensors as much as you want. Uh, you mean the length, uh, there's uh, five meters for the bending area and there's a two meter sensor. But the, the, the characteristic length, there is a characteristic oh, length. Oh, uh, the, the, the plate? Sensor, yes. Yeah, uh, the two meter ones are uh, one centimeter and the uh, five meter ones are 2.5 centimeters. You don't remember the brand name because they they can come from China. They have two companies. Here. No, no, they're made, in, they're made in France directly. It's uh, from Osmos, France. From Osmos. Okay, thank you very much. Any other question? Just to let you know that in the second session, we uh, Dennis Mitchell is going to talk about all the strengthening measure that were done on that bridge. So uh, 
So we, we just wanted to let you know before that the bridge was uh, well monitored, but also it was also well strengthened. So Fabien, is, could you come to the microphone? Thank you for the presentation. I have one uh, question. When you are going to demolish the bridge, are you expecting to do like some research program to just check the capacity at the end of their life of the <coughs> press stress uh, girdle? Yeah, uh, there is a, a committee uh, looking at that question specifically. Uh, there's talks about maybe leaving some of the monitoring equi equipment into place and just maybe cut the strands one after the other just to see at failure how, uh, how the bridge would be uh, impacted. So there's, I mean, on scenarios are still open right now, and there's, uh, I think there's talk about donating some structural elements to universities so they could do testing on it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this presentation.